about this thing. This is an AU 4 liter Intec. Uh, it's a single overhead cam. And if you're wondering what the difference is between the barrel, which I'm sure absolutely every single one of you know what it is, uh, if you're probably watching this video, I would say uh, the differences between this and the barrel are the, the main difference, obviously, is that it's a single overhead cam, which means it has one camshaft instead of the barrel having two. This particular one here does not have variable cam timing, which, which if you're unsure what that is, it changes the overlap of the cams and basically allows you to have a broader power band and uh, move the power band where you want it. So, I do have a VCT engine sitting outside there. That's probably the engine that will go into the car, but I'm gonna pull this one down today, assess the condition and have a good look at it, do some measuring of the ports and things like that and work out where we're gonna go with this because I wanna show you guys how to build a performance engine using this engine and it, the knowledge that hopefully I can impart to you guys. You should be able to apply that to every engine and any engine. Going through an intake, talking about resonances, velocity, port volume, plenum volume, all these kind of things, and basically just covering covering as much as I can so you guys have a reasonable idea of what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and why you should do these things and why you should calculate it so you at least have a ballpark idea of what's uh, going to happen. So you're not just bolting parts onto an engine like you often see, and people make shitty power or they make good peak power, but that's it. There's no uh, no quick time. There's no quick time slips no quick uh, trap, trap speeds or anything like that to go with it. Uh, it's just a big fat dyno number and we don't want that. So we're going to go have this build and talk about everything. Okay, so we'll talk about how to select headers. Uh, we'll do the calculations and I'll show you the calculations, put them up there for you guys to see and we'll choose a set of headers that's close enough um, to what we need. So furthermore, we'll be porting the head. Uh, I'll be doing that myself and I'll just take you guys along for the ride. We're talking about, you know, the minimum, cro uh, talking about minimum cross-sectional area and how it relates to RPM uh, and, and where you make your power. Um, uh, port volumes, port velocity, all that kind of stuff, uh, lengths, anyway, valve sizes, uh, valve jobs, everything. So I want to go through it all and uh, basically, yeah, we'll go through, basically make a, make a pretty good engine out of this thing. So, and then after that, we'll boost it. May not be the traditional turbo that everybody likes to put on there, maybe a centrifugal charger. Uh, that is the current plan. Plans may change, uh, we'll see how it goes, but I would like to give that a try. I do think it'd be pretty cool to see one of these make quite good power. With, without a turbo. So uh, anyway, we'll be taking it to the drag strip along the way and uh, having a good lot of fun with it. So and I wanna see you guys doing the same. So let me know what your builds are in the comments and uh, hopefully we can all learn together and uh, build together. Let's crack into it and get this thing apart and have a look inside. I picked this thing up for $135 guys, so I'm not expecting too much. So I just pulled the rocket cover off. Uh, it's pretty wet in there. I don't know if you guys can see all that, but that's all condensation. I already see a bit of corrosion on the uh, roller tips there. But, first glance, it does appear to be fairly minor. Probably a good thing we pulled this down when we did. So guys, before I pull this down, I'll give you a quick rundown of how it works. Uh, if you do have one of these, you probably do know, but you got your cam gear at the front here. This obviously turns, it's driven by the crank, uh, which rotates the camshaft, which is sitting uh, longitudinally in here. Uh, basically, as the camshaft rolls, the lobes do press on these rollers here, which push the tip of the rocker arm down onto your valve, which is here, valve spring, valve tip, uh, which does open your valve. So basically, these are known for being not that strong, but I think if you don't have uh, problems with valve control and you're not bouncing the valve and causing all kinds of trouble there, uh, we can probably make these live. A lot of people might argue you can cry treat uh, aluminium. Uh, some people say that it doesn't change the crystalline structure of the metal. Uh, I'll leave that up to you guys to decide. Uh, I'm not a metallurgist, so uh, I don't know myself, uh, but we will look into it, uh, but you know, probably not gonna do anything. Uh, I think Tunnel Vision do sell billet rockers, but 
Uh, if we can stay away from having to spend big dollars on rocker arms here, I'll be pretty happy. So try and get these to work. If they do break, that's the way it goes. But uh, I'll give it my best shot. Anyway, we'll pull these off and uh, have a look at the cam on underneath. These next bolts here are 10 mils. Uh, be very careful when you're doing these up. Uh, they do snap quite easily. Uh, ask me how I know. As you guys can see here, that, that moisture has caused a little bit of corrosion, but that's okay because I believe this is the factory cam and we won't be using it. Too small. So we'll see if we can get that out. Yep, it's free. So I'm gonna pull that out. I'll get this intake manifold off and we'll crack the head off. There's one thing I'd recommend for getting this intake manifold off if it's in the car. Uh, 10 mil ratchet ring spanner. It'll save your life, I promise. head off. Uh, a lot of people will argue about doing it in sequence. Uh, I'm going to do it in sequence. It's just something I do. You may not need to do it, but why would you unevenly load the head if you don't need to? You know, so I'm going to, so I'll pull this head off now. Let's have a look. like to put the bolts back where they came from so I don't have to go looking for them later. That is how tight they are. Just busted a socket. Right. guys I'm back it's a few hours later I've let this penetrant soak in I've got myself a nice hardened uh, 14 mil socket and uh, in half inch and we're gonna try and crack these now
let's lift the head off. At first glance, the boards don't look too bad at all. Um, there's a tiny bit of scuffing. A little bit of uh, water, had a little bit of water in this one here. Uh, doesn't look like anything too significant though. No, shouldn't look too bad. Cool. Rotates very freely, which is nice. All right guys, I'm just about done here, but first I wanna ask you all a question and you can do your homework and come back and post it in the comments. I'm gonna do this every time I post one of these videos uh, because I wanna teach you guys and I wanna learn myself. Uh, so the question is, what is better for high RPM power production? A shorter intake runner length or a longer intake runner length? Now I want you guys to go and have a look, Google it, whatever you need to do, have a look into it and see what is better for high RPM power and why, and post in the comments your answer. Uh, it's fine to be wrong. To be honest, at some point, I didn't know this either. Nobody knew it. And, and any engine builder that tells you they knew it from the start is wrong, and they don't. And maybe, maybe they knew it, but maybe they don't know why. So, uh, I want you guys to go and have a look on Google uh, and, and come back and, and let me know what you found out because uh, it's definitely something that we're going to be talking about more uh, when we start modifying the intake on this thing and the head as well. As this series progresses, I'll probably start asking a little bit more in-depth questions uh, to try and throw a few people off and make, <laughs> make sure uh, that everybody gets in and has a good, uh, good look and a little bit of study because, uh, yeah, I think there's a lot we can do with these engines and... Uh, as long as we know the right things and apply the correct principles to them, we can make a lot of horsepower. And, you know, maybe the barrow guys will get a bit frightened by this thing. Who knows? Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. Ring that little notifications bell. Select that so you'll be notified as soon as uh, one of my videos comes up and we can get into the next one. So stay tuned. Cheers.